gonna start off by watering in the lemon cypress that I have here. And they're fresh from the nursery, so I just bought them. So the first thing I like to do is come in and provide them with as much water as I can. They're a little light right now because they need water. While these get watered in, let's go grab two of the containers that we're gonna be using. We're gonna grab out these two containers right here and hopefully we can get them out without having to move this big heavy container right here. So what we'll do, we'll try to just scoot everything over to give us just enough space to be able to come in and lift this out. and this one too in addition to grabbing out the containers we also need to grab out the saucers that go with these and it's these two right here i believe hopefully they'll fit i believe that these will work yeah they work so i have two of these matching containers here so we'll set these off to the side and we'll go and get the other containers that they're going to be in brace yourself i know look at this y'all look at this if i can get it on the table so I'm coming right back in with these lemon cypress inside of the same containers. We had a lot of success with these lemon cypress plants and we ended up being away from home for an extended amount of time for a medical emergency. And with that being said, Oh, so many of the beautiful things I had in my home perished, that I had in my garden perished, but it's fine because when you look at what's really important, it doesn't really, the two don't equal up. Like you can replace plants, but you can't replace life. So it is what it is. So we'll clean these out. And the only thing I want off of these is just my screen. We'll just scoot over our hydrangea propagations and we'll get these out.
And I already have one that's planted up. We'll get our containers out. Let's make a little bit more space. And we'll set our watering can over here on the side. Got my gloves on, so we'll just go in and start planting up these lemon cypress here one by one, and then from there, we'll go in and start to give them shapes because I don't just want a bunch of lemon cypress that are just shaped the same way. I want them all to have their own personality. I should have went with one that was kind of bigger for this large container right here. So, we'll make it work. No, we won't. I'm gonna pull this out. up our lemon cypress and if you're going to get into topiary and shaping your topiary the one thing that I can say is when you look for plants you want to make sure that you look for a plant that has pretty much a single stem unless you want like a multi-trunk situation going on 
Sometimes it is necessary to leave the side branching on your topiary in order to get the look that you're going for. Come in closer and I'll show you what I'm talking about. On this topiary right here, now I'll go in and I'll start cutting all of this back. So anything down at the bottom, I'll just go ahead and I'll cut them back. Even if it extends down into the soil or beneath the soil, Because what I want to be able to see is I want to be able to see clean branching and I'm going to switch my gloves here, but I want to be able to see clean branching around the base here. And so I'll just cut all of this back. and begin to shape my branch in a way that I get the topiary shape that I'm going for. So you see, as I cut up, there is a division here. So at this point, I can decide, do I want to keep this together and have it grow into a ball? Or do I want to choose a central leader and so if that was the case i would cut off half of this so you kind of want to go with the one that makes the branch look straightest and sometimes that will mean that you lose the majority of your show but with the side branching here it will take over later so I am going to actually keep all of this and we're going to just cut this into a round type situation. Now, with this one right here, you can see where I have this one off to the side from the beginning, I'm just going to go ahead and clip that off as far down as possible. But ones like these, this one right here, this is perfect because down low, my branching, I don't have much that I have to have to throw out in order to get clean branching down at the bottom. Okay. So we'll go ahead and start shaping these up. So I use my trimmers here. I'll link these in my Amazon store. They may already be linked. I also have a pair of shears as well as a pair of scissors.
All right, now for this container right here, I wanted to give this a living mulch. With your lemon cypress, you are going to want to make sure that for every one that you have in your house, you wanna have a saucer up underneath them. So I bought, and I'll show you the example with this one, but let me talk about this one real quick. This container right here, I use a lemon coral sedum as a mulch. And the reason why I'm doing that is because I want the lemon color on the top, the lemon color on the bottom. By all means, come in and use rocks. You can use mulch. I mean, it's so many different things you can use. You can use other type of low growing type plants to, you know, give you a different look for your containers. But I want all of these to take a different shape. So we have a poodle right here, but then also at the top here, I left a little bit of a lead here because I want this to be a three tiered poodle. And I am gonna come in and I'm gonna stake these up once I get them in their place. And I have some balls here. So I have three balls, well, four balls, but I do have a poodle that's um, double. And then I have a triple here. And so as they begin to grow out, I'll go in and shape them a little bit more. Okay, now for these containers right here, I actually bought them just for this collection. I bought them for this collection and I'm gonna continue to expand my lemon cypress collection because I just want so many of these. And I'm when I say I mean so many, I want them everywhere i do want to go down to um the southern states like down in texas because texas georgia they have some of the prettiest lemon cypress that are way larger than the ones i'm able to get my hands on here in the st louis region but that's okay drop down in the comment box let me know do you have a collection of topiaries and if you do i would love to hear about it when i was working with the cuttings best practice would be to go ahead and lay some type of cloth down i am going to get as many of the cuttings up that i can get out but in the meantime and in between time, if one of the cuttings decide to take root and it turn into like a free tree, guess what? I'm gonna dig that one out and I'm gonna put it in a small little white container similar to these right here, but it will just be white. So I try to make sure that any opportunity I can have to get free plants or to reuse a plant, I definitely take full advantage of it. Here's our next area that we're going to be watering here. Now this area I planted up, I find myself having to water this area more often because it's on the side of the house. So oftentimes I forget about it, but now that I have it down on my schedule, I'm watering or trying to keep this watered in at least three times a week. So since I've been doing that, the plants over here have been kind of loving their life. They are dried out now because we did have some days where it was in the 90s but it felt like the 100s so because of that a lot of my containers are dried out no worry no big deal we're just going to go in and we're going to just water these in just like we've been doing everything else
went and got the water hose for this container right here because with the fern, I like to saturate my fern. And when I tell you I go in with my fern and I normally, my routine is I come in, I missed it. Whether I use a spray bottle or I use a watering can to create some type of moisture on the leaves. Now I will say I have not been as intentful this year as last year. Last year my designs included a ton more ferns. For example, in the front I had my ferns, I had Supertunia Bordeaux, I had Verbena, and I had a coral geranium. When I tell you it was absolutely amazing, it gave all of the vibes, all of the feels because the Verbena was chartreuse, so it was absolutely amazing. But I was intentional because I had way more ferns sprinkled out into my garden. So therefore, in my garden, I had to make sure that I added that as part of my watering regimens to make sure I take care of my ferns. But this year, when I did this container right here, I came in with a ton of ferns and we packed this out because I wanted it to look like one great big huge fern almost to where you're like, okay, what variety of fern is this? Because if there is a fern that grows this big in one season, I need it in my life. So that was the vibe in the field that I wanted to give. So we are going to heavily saturate this fern. Now I do have a obelisk in the top here. It was not intentional for me to have anything vining, but there is a weed that's growing all over my hydrangea. And when I say weed, it's morning glory. So although people use morning glory in their gardens, if you have a plant that is growing somewhere where you don't want it to be, then that incense is a weed. So this is a weed. We're gonna pull this off. I don't want anything growing on top of the obelisk here. So I am going to pull this off and try to snatch it off of my hydrangea tree. When I tell you this is an absolute pest, it is a pest. And that is one of the reasons why I'm not too big on using plants that are considered invasive. Because since the induction of me trying to start a garden here, when we bought this home several years ago, we've dealt with so many type of invasive plants that grow with roots, whether they're violets morning glory mint our backyard was just riddled with mint i mean just a nightmare so when it comes to invasive plants i don't care if somebody says it's not invasive in my in my yard honey i don't take no chances with it and i suggest you do the same because i'm telling you if you get one invasive plant in your garden that really shouldn't be there it's like you'll never get rid of it so let's go ahead let me cut the water on and we'll water this in so i'll just stick this down in here and we'll start watering i guess it just fell out honey okay now let me go turn on the water all right And I'm just going to spray my fern, add the moisture to the leaves that it's been waiting for. I'll just unwind this, rip off the head.
here is the largest seed pod known to man here. And look what's on the bottom of it. Has to go. I pulled all of the weeds, unraveled them. Now here's the thing. What I'm going to do is one, those weeds were around the tops of this hydrangea, had it in a chokehold, baby, had it in a chokehold. One, we're gonna go in, we're gonna use some iron tone around the base of this. But then in addition to that, we are also going to come in and we are going to water this hydrangea in so that way it can perk back up. As far as the weed that was growing over here, I left the bottoms of them as much as I can intact because I'm gonna get online and we are going to order some type of weed killer. We'll go in, we'll treat our hydrangea first, saturate it, hydrate it because it looks like it's been worn through and although it is the end of the season, your hydrangeas may be looking like they are, you know, on their way out, but continue to water your hydrangeas. Now, let me tell you. So remember, we were going to take some hydrangea propagations from this tree and we ended up having to switch gears and go to another area of the garden and take some hydrangea cuttings. Now every year in my garden without fail, I take hydrangea propagations in order to get ready for the next season. So I came in and I put my blend of fertilizer on this hydrangea and guess what you guys, we have buds. This thing is absolutely 100% covered in buds. Let's get in and take a look at it. Here is a bloom. Can you see that right there? Can you see it? Okay. Now you can. There's a bloom. Here is a bloom right here. Here is a bloom. Here is a bloom right here. Here is a bloom inside of here. Can you see how it's opening up? It's a bloom that's going to come out of there. Here's yet another bloom. So it's absolutely covered in blooms.
this is what our granules look like here. So I use about maybe a total of four of these for this entire hydrangea. Works out perfect. I am gonna use the rest of this inside because this area, I don't treat this hydrangea bush is best because the other hydrangeas they get fertilizer they get compost they get iron but they get a lot more but this flower bed is 100 percent rock so i'm going to throw some in the middle of it too and so the work that we're doing for this year will reap the benefits next year let's water it in The water hose, this is about, so I'm not wasting water, let me put it in there. Because what we're gonna do, we're gonna leave that running. Okay, so, can you all see how it's trickling? Let me turn it down a little bit more, okay right here i'm gonna put this at the back of my hydrangea tree. we want to leave this on for about 30 minutes and we're gonna come back and take it out so we want the water to run down just like that we're going to set the hydrangeas right here I'm gonna turn this light on for them. Then we'll also set this set of hydrangeas right here. These hydrangeas have been bumped up or shall I say, have graduated to this shelf right here because normally this is the shelf that the larger hydrangea propagations are on. So now these have made it through, they're putting on a lot of growth. So now they get exposed to more light than they were getting when we had them up underneath on the other rack. 30 minutes have passed by. We're gonna pull the water hose. Set this in there while I cut the water hose off. <laughs> 